Okay, let the fun begin. Um, whenever I do any of my weathering, I'm always using, uh, or generally, uh, the Floquel brand of paint. Uh, and I heard an artist tell me once that when, whenever uh, you're doing a colour painting, you should always use a minimum of three colours. And I apply the same sort of theory to, uh, to my weathering. Uh, so the three colours that I'm going to use are the Floquel Rust, uh, Weathered Black, uh, the grime, and as a fourth one, I'm also going to use engine black, even though it's uh, not really colour, it's sort of black. Uh, so, if you have a look at the, uh, the photo now, I'm going to try and um, recreate that streaky rust effect over the front of the smoke box. Uh, and this can be done with um, using the rust uh, sprayed on with an airbrush, uh, like I'll show you. Uh, and... I've got here a cap full of mineral turps. Uh, I've also got uh, a paintbrush which is sort of reasonably stiff. Uh, it's still soft but it's still a bit sort of stiff. Uh, and I'll show you how you do that. Uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll paint all of the rust areas first and then we'll go and do the streaking and stuff with the, with the turps. So we just want to put a light, light bits here and there over the smoke box I'm also going to go over the foot plate only needs to be light this is thinned fairly well so it may I'm doing a sort of a couple of coats here just to sort of build it up a little bit but I'm only building it up slowly Put a bit on the back of the tender there, around the wheels, uh, over the coupler, maybe over the catcher at the front, and its buffers. Maybe a little bit around the filler hatch, the water from the filling up the tender would have created a little bit of rust stains here and there, same on the top of the lid. Okay, so now you just grab your paintbrush and you don't want to drown the paintbrush in in, uh, in the turps, so I usually just sort of dab it on the, I've got a bit of timber here, I'll just dab it onto that. And uh, using upward strokes, very lightly, we're just going to bring the paint up in a streaky effect. You might have to experiment with how much how much uh, turps is on your brush and just keep dabbing it off if it's a bit, if it's a bit wet. This technique just takes away that airbrushed look. over the buffers, over the couplers, wherever you put the rust. Hopefully you can see there that effect starting as it dries out, we're getting that nice sort of uneven sort of rusty effect. We'll just go ahead and let that dry a little bit and we'll just have another look once it's dry, see if we need to add any more. 
can always go over with the airbrush, add a little bit and then repeat the process again. I'm just going to add a little bit more to the front of the smoke box. It was probably a little bit wet, the paintbrush, when I first applied it. So we'll go and add a little bit more there. And again, with a little bit of that mineral turp, so I'll make sure the brush is fairly dry this time. streaky effect. Once that's dry we'll have another look and continue on. The next colour is the Flocal Grime. Uh, I find that it's really good for doing dust up the side. Uh, it's also good, we're going to do the same effect uh, with the uh, with the turps uh, for the stains like from the impurities in the water uh, so you know over the top of the the firebox up the side of the tender uh, maybe a little bit round the cylinders where all the steam sort of is leaked out uh, we're going to also put a little bit on the uh, the air pump uh, yeah so again this is only very light Maybe a bit over where the injectors are. Create that dust up the side. Very lightly. A little bit on the back. Heavier down the bottom there. Get on the cab side. So now we get our uh, turps brush, and again, just the smallest amount of turps, just about brush most of it off. find there that I've sort of put a little bit too much maybe on the cylinders but this virtually takes it off the more you sort of work into it a bit Again, we let that dry, we have another look. If we need to put a bit more, we'll put a bit more on. I decided I might add a little extra bit on the back of the tender here, maybe just where the water has washed the dust away. Same thing, just use the paintbrush, work it in. Maybe a little bit on the other side as well. 
you may not see this effect sort of take place until it's finished, but it'll, we know it's there. I'm also going to add a little bit more to the top of that firebox. Go right along the top of the boiler just to blend it all through a bit. Most of this will be um, blended through with another colour anyhow. Okay, let that dry and we see how we go. We do a little bit on that air pump too, which I sort of forgot about. Just a little bit. Again, we'll put a little bit of terps on there just to streak it through. Not much, it's enough. Lovely. I'm going to now apply some weathered black. Um, I probably could have done the weathered black before the grime. But I find that when you use the terps, it takes the grime with it and it turns the, the grime colour into more of a grey than a white. So I've done it this way around. Um, you just got to sort of be careful. Uh, the, the weathered black is to sort of blend everything all together. But we also don't want to overspray it too much that we take away all the white or the rust colour. So I'm just going to very carefully sort of go over, maybe not over the white bits, but cab sides. front wheels and over the front of that buffer just to tone down that bright red top of the cab roof Cab sides tone down those numbers a little bit, so that the more you apply, the sort of more darker they go. You can get a pretty good finish. I might also get the wheels spinning over. If they will, because of the dirty track. give the wheels a little bit of a go that makes them all nice and even don't get any shadows behind the side rods marvellous that should be about it for the uh, the weathered black so the final colour applied with the airbrush is the uh, engine black uh, this is fantastic colour, I reckon. Uh, it's really, really flat, dark black. Excellent for soot. So, uh, down in the top of the stack, and just across the top of the roof. Maybe a little bit on the top of the boiler there. You can run some black stripes down the side, sort of here and there, just to add a little bit of variety. bit on the drivers. A 
And that's it for the airbrushing. I'm going to add a few little uh, details which I'll show you in a second. So before we flat finish everything, I'm going to uh, highlight a couple of these really good details. Uh, this being a brass loco, it's, it's got some fantastic little details on there. And one of the little tricks I sort of found out uh, is you can make a, another sort of streaked effect from these, uh, the boiler washout plugs. Because uh, they stand out, there's a couple of them there that are pretty easy to access. Uh, we'll highlight those with a little white streak. Uh, to do that, I'm using uh, these Winsor & Newton's water mixable oil colours. Uh, and I'm, I'm also going to use the Microscale Microsol to, to wash it down, uh, or to thin it down. Uh, so I'll show you how that's done. I've also got some ivory black which we'll put on the axle boxes just to recreate the sort of the oily uh, effect. So I've got two of those on a little palette, a, a little blob of each colour. Uh, and all we want to do is we want to just get, if you can see that there, the tiniest little bit on the end of a really small paintbrush. And this is straight, this hasn't been thinned. Uh, and I'll see if I can zoom in there a little bit. Okay, so we want to just put the tiniest little bit around the bottom of that plug. Just like that. And using the microsole, we're going to drag that paint down. Okay. Now to sharpen it up a bit, you want to sort of clean the paintbrush and come down the sides with the clean brush. And there's a little bit of a stain. Once that dries off, that'll look quite good. So we might do the same on the other side. We go up there a little bit. Use that one in there. A little bit of white. Bit of microsol to bring that paint down. Clean the brush again and we can, whoop, probably a bit too much on there. A little bit difficult with that handrail in the road, but... And there's our leaking fusible plug, or bore the washout plug I should say. So once, once that's all sort of underway, move on to the black. We'll put a little bit of, I'll zoom back out again. A little bit of black around the bottom of the axle box. Same on the other side. Okay. 
little bit of microsol. We can also put a little bit of that black maybe on the air pump on the lower section where the oil's sort of washed down and maybe even a little bit on the foot plate to show like a wet stain and that could have even dripped down under that cylinder a little bit of microsol Take a little bit of that out of there. Seems to be a little bit more workable once it dries off a bit. Much better. So that's pretty well finished for the weathering. I'm just going to go and flat finish it now to seal it all in. Uh, we'll put some coal in the top and we'll stick it into service. Okay, I've got some real coal here which I've crushed up uh, and put through a sieve uh, and that's what, I'm, that's what I find is the best for coal, real coal. And all I'm going to do is just put some straight PVA in the top of the turret there. Spread it out with the paintbrush. So I'm going to put a bit down in there. Now this is 50-50 PVA glue and water with just a little bit of um, uh, dishwashing detergent as a wetting agent. I'm just going to paint a little bit of that down in the back there. And that's going to um, help the coal stick in the back of that tender there from a bit of over overfill then we just spoon her in
make it a little bit higher at the back there. We can uh, just shape that slightly. Bring that coal forward in the back of the tender there. Then I've just got a syringe. Bit of that 50-50 uh, PVA given water. And we just slowly feed that into there. Just another couple of drops down the back there. And that's it, we just let that dry. It's ready to go.